Um, you just say what uh, class you just taught and what school you're at and your name. Okay. And that's it. So I am ready when you are. Okay. Uh, my name is Stacy Drum. I teach sixth grade at Van Gorder Elementary School in Sparks, Nevada. And I just taught an ELA social studies um, lesson, Common Core, um, entitled Should Egypt Get Her Treasures Back? Okay, so we're going to start off with the first section here. Okay. We want to understand the decisions you made in planning for this lesson and how it fits into the unit and year. How does this lesson connect to and build on students' prior skills and knowledge? What was taught before this lesson and what will come after it? Um, this is part of a larger unit on Egypt and um, I want everything to be text-based. So this kind of falls in the middle of the unit where we've done some introductory activities where they've read other texts. Um, but this class, I, I've had about 60% of them before, and um, they love seminars. So this was a fishbowl seminar that I planned, and it was planned around a video that we watched and they took notes on. Um, there were two readings that were slightly above grade level for sixth grade and they annotated, they discussed, they read it several times, and um, then they went home last night and actually wrote a paragraph, a power paragraph, with a claim, some reasoning, and some evidence. All of that went together to help them with the Fishbowl Seminar today so that they could talk about their side of the issue. So for the rest of the year, or uh, for the rest of the unit, we're actually going to, um, they're very excited, so they're going to continue talking about the fishbowl um, questions, and then um, we're going to move into other things about Egypt. So this was to take the past and move it more into the present with some things that are happening nowadays with, with the past, because they always ask, um, why is this important? And um, I wanted to show them why learning about their history and the history of the world is important today. Excellent. That's great. All right. Um, is this is the text used in this lesson part of a sequence of texts designed to build skills and knowledge? If so, please give an example of other texts that form this sequence. Um, the other texts that we're using on Egypt, we, we do use the textbook sometimes, and um, we're using a narrative piece, a couple of narrative piece actually, pieces actually, some novels. Um, I want to bring in some other pieces of text where they can kind of pull those apart and pull evidence from it. So I found these, one of the pieces of text um, was actually from a Washoe County School District unit that was written by sixth grade teachers and posted on Edmodo. So I got that and then I searched the internet for the other piece. Um, Continuing on with that, there's going to be other articles on Egypt to bring the present, uh, to bring it to more of a present day sort of thing, and we're also going to um, continue reading the novels for the rest of the, the unit. All right. We'll talk about the standards targeted in this, in this lesson. What did you do to make the lesson reflect the full intent of that standard? Um, the standard... <laughs> The standards, it hits so many. I, I think I probably have about 20 standards on here. Um, the listening and speaking, obviously, with the seminar, we hit a variety of those standards. The reading standards that they had to do in order to find evidence in text. And then the writing to sources standard, um, where they have to take the source and write according to that. And they're going to continue writing after this, too. So I, it just it hits so many standards doing a seminar like this where they have to prepare for it and the preparation itself hits, hits a ton of the Common Core standards. All right. Um, which of the core action indicators do you think this lesson best exemplifies and why? Um, I'm going to look sure. in here. <laughs> so I have that in here. Hang on. Oh, I know where that is. Okay. 
Um, I think it, it hits all three in the ELA social studies area. Um, in Core Action 1, it definitely does text-based instruction that engages the students. In um, Core Action 2, the questions and tasks require the students to cite evidence from the text to support, to support analysis, inference, and claims. That's a big one. And then in Core Action 3, the teacher had, I had to provide all the conditions for students to focus on the text. So everything was text focused, um, which all three of the core action indicators require. So I think it hit quite a few. All right. So we have the next section here. Okay. We are interested in how the shifts required by the CCSS are being incorporated into your instruction. Discuss how this lesson illustrates the shifts required by the CCSS. Um, when you look at the ELA shifts, I, I think it really hit shift two, which is knowledge of the disciplines, or in the disciplines, where we brought in text rather than me just bringing in activities for the kids. Um, shift four, which is text-based answers, so they, they constantly had to be referring back to the text. When they wrote, they had to refer to the text and spoke it, and when they spoke. And then writing from sources again, which is shift five. So I think it really hit two, four, and five pretty clearly. How did you teach the content of this lesson prior to the CCSS? What is the same and what is different? I, I did a lot of activities in the past. Um, I taught sixth grade. This is my first year in sixth grade in a long time, but um, I still remember doing my Egypt unit and we dressed up like Egyptians and we drew hieroglyphics and everything. So there were a lot of activities and not a lot of cohesion. And I think the Common Core, especially the ELA standards, um, have brought in that cohesion. It, it's, it's made me really look at my teaching so that I'm writing more with the kids and we're looking at text and we're having these discussions and we're doing research. So before, I, I just think it's the difference between activities and um, text-based work. All right. Student engagement is crucial to the work of the CCSS. We want to understand how you ensure that all students had the opportunity to productively engage in the work of the lesson. So how did you or do you support all students in working with grade level text? Do you provide scaffolding for students below grade level? And how did you create opportunities for students who are at more advanced? I really believe in building kind of a staircase with my kids. So starting out looking at the text individually, they, they read it silently. Um, then I read it aloud so that those kids who could not access the text in the beginning had greater access. And, and then they worked in a small group so that they could talk about the text, read it aloud again, and um, take notes on it. They helped each other with annotation. Um, so the individual, large group, small group. Um, it gives those kids who have trouble accessing the text, it gives them that extra scaffolding. Um, I also allow the kids to come in before and after school if they have questions on things, which I did have a couple kids come in this morning and ask questions. Um, those kids that are more advanced, they feel like they can add to the conversation more. Um, they're, they're really my leaders when it comes to annotating, and they have a lot of really good ideas that they share with the, with the groups. Um, once they've worked in small group, then they're kind of on their own again during the discussion portion and um, then we come back together as a whole class. So um, as I was walking around too during the, during the discussion, I was hitting up a few of the kids who might need a little bit more help and pointing where they needed to be writing and everything and refocusing. So it, it's a lot of moving around, um, but it's also a lot of peer work at this age. And, and now that they've done a few of these kind of text-based um, activities, they're able to really work together. Excellent. Uh, how do you know that all students were able to successfully respond to the text dependent questions and tasks with precision? Did students acquire the literacy skills addressed in this lesson? And what did you do for students who did not acquire the literacy skills addressed in this lesson? So, you know, I do the backwards planning, so I'm looking at what I want out of the lesson before I even begin. And then um, they have folders that you could see during the filming. Um, all of their work is kept in there. So everything's written and highlighted and annotated, so I will be looking at their written work 
in the next day or so. Um, there's still some things that they need to write, and then they're going to add to their writing over the next few days. So um, definitely the written piece. I kept track on the clipboard of the discussion piece on how much they were talking and what they were saying and what kinds of questioning strategies they had. Um, so, so I do have hard copies of things that I can look at. All right. Which behaviors from Core Action 3 did students best exemplify in this lesson? And what actions have you taken as a teacher to make that happen? Hang on, let's mm -hmm. see. You know, I think B on Core Action 3 is, is one that I, I hit upon every day, and that's that I expect evidence and precision. The kids are always saying, oh, you should have precision in everything you do. Um, we were actually doing a math lesson one day, and I showed the Ohio State Marching Band and how amazing they are, at, and I said, this is precision. So this is something we need to have in our work every day. Um, so they bring that in to the classroom. So I really think in Core Action 3, my expecting evidence and precision and then probing the students for more and modeling what kinds of questions and answers that I expect from them is also a big big thing. All right. Last two. <laughs> and these ones are a little bit easier probably. Great instructors are continuously learning. We want to understand what you celebrated in this lesson and what you'd improve upon. So reflecting on this lesson, what worked particularly well and what might you do differently? I, you know, I did a seminar earlier this year that I, I thought was going to be this great seminar on Mesopotamia, another historical one, and it just fell flat. And I think the biggest thing was I didn't have an interesting subject. So this time I really wanted an interesting subject for the kids that they could get into, which I think they did, and I wanted to provide enough text-based um, evidence that they could pull from it during, during the discussion and to write about. Um, what I would improve upon, I, you know, I, I know the kids get very excited, um, which is why I do the two cents, so, but that kind of got away from me this time. I, I let it go because they were having a really good focused conversation, but I, I think, you know, I always ask them what worked and what didn't, and so I'm just definitely going to go off of what, what they think for the next one. All right. Were there any surprises or unexpected student behaviors or reactions? No. Um, I, I Well, maybe. I, I was really excited and surprised at how um, enthusiastic they were over it. I, I kind of, I was hoping to bring that enthusiasm with, with this subject, but um, you never know sometimes until you actually sit down and start it. And um, seeing some of the kids who don't speak a whole lot in class get very excited and talk about it, I think that was, that was really neat to see. All right. Okay. That's it. Yay. Thank you.